Down there, life continues. The traffic is awful, stocks go on trading, and Star Trek is still showing.
down there. Good day, grade 8 learners. Welcome to today's Natural Sciences lesson. My name is Papa Cheso Singo, and this lesson is proudly brought to you by the Housing Department of Education. In today's lesson, we are going to be learning under the knowledge area, matter and materials. The topic is particle model of matter, and the subtopic, which is our main area of focus, is density, mass, and volume. Now, let's go through the lesson objectives together. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to define density, mass, and volume, explain the units of mass, volume, and density, and calculate density, mass, and volume. All this is sourced from your cap statement on page 43. Now let's go through pre-knowledge. So this has laid the foundation for today's lesson. In the sixth grade, we were introduced to the different states of matter, which are solids, liquids and gases and so far in the eighth grade we have been adding on to what we have already learned when we started states of matter in the previous lesson now let's learn let's do the baseline activity i'm going to read out the questions and then give you time to respond you can send any questions that you may have to our whatsapp line 079-578-2908 you can also send in the solutions okay so i'll read out the questions now number one how can materials be made to change their state number two a gas condenses to a liquid when it is blank the melting point is the pore, it is the temperature at which a substance is blank, and then which process requires heat to be added. Which process requires heat to be added. I'm going to give you four minutes to do this activity, and then after four minutes, we will do the solutions together. So see you after four minutes.
Welcome back, learners. Now, let's answer these four questions. I hope you are sending in your responses to our WhatsApp line, which is 079-578-2908. Let's answer the first question. How can materials be made to change their state? So, what needs to happen? Right, materials need to obtain or lose energy to change state. So, they need either to... Uh, obtain energy or to lose energy for them to change their state. Number two, a gas condenses to a liquid when it is blank. When it is blank, so when you cool a gas, it will condense into a liquid. And then the melting point is the temperature at which a substance blank. It is the temperature at which a substance changes from a solid to a liquid. And then which process requires heat to be added. So which process requires heat? It is either melting or evaporation. You can pick any one of these two answers. Now take one minute to quickly copy down the corrections. Welcome back, learners. Now, let's move on to terminology. So, these are the terms we are going to be using during the lesson, and we need to know what they mean. The first term is density. Density is the amount of mass in each volume of matter. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up, and mass is a measure of the amount of matter of an object. All right. Now, let's start with density mass and volume. Now, we already know that everything around us is matter and everything around us has mass and volume and everything around us occupies space. Now, this includes the three states of matter, be it a solid, a liquid or a gas. It has a mass and it has a volume. Your solids, examples of solids is the clothing you wear, the stationery you use at school, the tables and chairs that you sit at at school, and then liquids will include all the beverages that you drink. Is it milk? Is it cold drink? Or is it, is it just water? And then gases, this covers the wind, the air we breathe. It could be the fog and water vapor or steam that is in the air. Now let's start off with mass. So mass is the measure of the amount, the amount of matter that an object is made of. And mass has units. What are they? Mass is measured in units such as grams and kilograms. So for grams, we use the small letter G, and then for kilograms, we use kg. Now, when we measure the mass of smaller objects, we will often use grams or even milligrams which is mg and we use scales to measure the mass of objects so when we say we are measuring the mass of an object we are actually measuring the amount of matter that an object is made of so that is what will be doing when we're measuring mass. Now, how do we calculate mass? So mass, remember, is measured in grams and in kilograms. So one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And then how do we calculate? So if we want to find out how many grams uh, to convert grams to kilograms, we simply say the amount of kilograms multiplied by a 
thousand. That's how we convert it after we measure. So here is an example of a mass conversion. Let's say we want to convert or we want to find out how many grams is 2.5 kilograms. So what do we do? We say 2.5 kgs multiplied by a thousand and that will give you 2,500 grams. So therefore, 2.5 kgs is equal to 2,500 grams. So that's one mass conversion. Let's do it the other way around. Remember, our units are grams and kilograms. G for grams and kg for kilograms. Now we still know, we still stand with one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Now, how do we find, how do we convert grams to kilograms? This is the formula that you use if you want to convert grams to kilograms. You say kg is equal to grams divided by a thousand. Grams divided by one thousand. That's how you calculate. So now let's do this quick example of a mass conversion. So we need to convert 1,500 grams to kilograms. Now, how do we do it? We're going to use this formula. So we're going to divide 1,500 grams by 1,000, and that will give us 1.5 kgs. So therefore, 1.5 kgs is equal to 1,500 grams. So the next time maybe you go to the store or you go somewhere where you're going to see a, a, a packet of sugar or a packet of salt and it's written 500 grams on it or it's written 1.5 kgs you can now convert and find out how many grams are these kgs or how many kgs are these grams okay now that we can do mass conversion now let's move on to the next one volume let's move on to volume so we said volume is the amount of space an object occupies. So the amount of space you occupy is your volume. The amount of space I occupy is my volume. The amount of space this pen occupies is its volume. Now volume, I'm sure you've normally been measuring it in liters and milliliters, right? A liter of milk, 500 milliliters of juice, 200 milliliters of cooking oil, and so on and so forth. So that's how we have been measuring volume. Volume. Now, how do we measure the volume of an irregular object? Because not all objects have length, width, and height. So this is how we measure the volume of an irregular object. So to measure a certain quantity of liquid in a measuring cylinder, so you need what you need to do is you measure a certain quantity in a measuring cylinder. For example, you can pour 20 milliliters of water in a measuring cylinder and you call that V1. And then you drop the object into the measuring cylinder and then you note the new level of water. You note the new level of water and then you record the new level as V2. And then you take the difference between the two levels, the difference between V2 and V1, that is the volume of the irregular object that you would have dropped into the liquid. So the volume of the object, V, is equal to V2 minus V1. Right, so here is a picture to further explain what I've just said. So to measure the volume of an object that is irregular, you start off by measuring or pouring a liquid into a measuring cylinder and then you measure it. So here we are using a beaker and its volume is 30 cubic centimeters. Now, if you add a stone, you see the stone has an irregular shape, you add it to the beaker, there is going to be displacement. There's going to, the, the level of the water is going to rise. And then you take the new measurement. So this is V1 and then this is V2. Now, so you, to measure the volume of the stone, you're going to say V2 minus V1, which is going to be 60 minus 30, which will give you 30 cubic centimeters being the volume of the stone, the irregularly shaped stone. All right. Now, there are other ways of calculating volume as well. 
This volume is also measured in units like uh, cubic centimeters, uh, decimeters cubed. Now, we can also calculate it by measuring, especially if we are dealing with cubes and rectangular prisms. So how do we measure the volume of a cube? How do we measure the volume of a rectangular prism? We say length times width times height. So you, cut, you multiply the length, the width, of the of the, the and the height of the object which one is the length this is the length how long is it and then this is the width of the object and then how tall or how deep is the object this is how you measure it you say length multiplied by width and multiplied by height all right now a liter if you look at a, 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 a carton of milk and it's written a liter so a liter is the space a cube or is a space inside a cube that is 10 centimeters wide 10 centimeters long and 10 centimeters deep so that is this space so when calculating volume for you and when calculating volume for example let's say you've got once a cube that is one centimeters long length one centimeter width and one centimeter height you say length times width times height and you get one cubic centimeters that one cubic centimeters is the same as one milliliter so you can use this one so one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeters so this means we said a liter initially we said a liter is the space inside a cube that is 10 centimeters wide 10 centimeters long and 10 centimeters deep so if you multiply 10 by 10 by 10, you are going to get 1,000. So 1 liter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. We also said that 1 cubic centimeter is equal to 1 milliliter. So which means 1 liter equals 1,000 milliliters as well. All right. Now, here is an example. Let me quickly erase the ink that I've just written all over here. Now, how would you calculate the volume of the rectangular prism below? So there is the rectangular prism. It is 12 centimeters long. It is 6 centimeters wide. And it is 8 centimeters deep. How would you calculate the volume of this rectangular prism? Like this is how you calculate it. So you identify the length. You identify the width. And you identify the height. So the length is 12 centimeters multiplied by the width which is six centimeters then multiplied by the height which is eight centimeters all this brings us to a volume of 576 cubic centimeters do not forget the units don't forget to place the units so there we go it is 576 cubic centimeters now let's convert 900 Nine, sorry, let's convert 9,356 cubic centimeters to dm cubed. So what do we do? So 1 dm cubed, so dm cubed is equal to um, the cubic centimeters, sorry, let me quickly fix this. The cubic centimeters divided by 1,000, the cubic centimeters divided by 1,000. What are the cubic centimeters? It's 9,356 cubic centimeters. So you divide it by 1,000 and then you end up with your dm cubed, which is 9.356 dm cubed. 9.356 dm cubed. Then example number two. Please convert 1,487 milliliters to liters. So what do we do? We say milliliters divided by 1,000. So 1,487 milliliters divided by 1,000, you will end up with 1.487 liters. 1.487 liters. 1.487 liters. So that is how you do the conversions. That is how you do the conversions. So I've got a conversions table here. I've got a conversions table. And then here on the col on the columns, we've got cages, liters, uh, dm cubed, grams, milliliters, and cubic centimeters. Now, so we need to convert 8 kgs to 
grams. We need to convert 5 liters to milliliters and then we need to convert 2.5 dm cubed to centimeters cubed. Now, how are we going to do that? So, first things first, what you need to do is start off with the kgs. So, you write the number, you write the number under kg. Then, you go back here, you go back here to the grams column and then you start filling in the zeros. We are filling them in in this direction from right to left. We are filling them in from the grams here all the way there. So from right to left. So there's the first zero, the second zero, and the third zero. So 8 kgs is equal to 8,000 grams. Now next we'll go on liters, 5 liters. So what do you do? You write the number 5, and then you start here where there's the milliliter, and then you start filling in the zero, moving in from right to left. The first zero, the second zero and the third zero until there's no more space. Now, for dm cubed, we've got two digits there. It is 2.5. So what do you go do? You go and write the two and then the five. Then you start from centimeters cubed, moving in that direction, and then fill in the zeros in the available space. So there we go. 8 kgs is 8,000 grams. 5 liters is 5,000 milliliters. And 2.5 dm cubed is 2. Uh, is 2,000, it's 2,500, 2,500 centimeters cubed. It is 2,500 centimeters cubed. Okay, now let's do an activity. There are five questions here that we need to answer. Please do send in your answers to 079-578-2908. Number one, what is the relationship between density, mass, and volume? Number two, what is the unit of mass? Number three, convert 8.456 kg to grams. And then number four, convert 1,256 milliliters to liters. Number five, calculate the volume of the rectangular prism shown below. Take five minutes to answer those questions. Then after five minutes, we will do the solutions together.
Welcome back, learners. Now let's answer the questions. So, what is the relationship between density, mass, and volume? What is the relationship? Density is the mass that can fit into a certain volume. What is the unit of mass? So, we use grams and kilograms as the units of mass. Then convert 8.456 kgs to grams what do we do remember grams is equal to kilograms multiplied by a thousand so we're going to multiply 8.456 kgs or kilograms by a thousand and this will give us 8456 grams so therefore 8.456 kilograms is equal to 8456 grams now take a minute to quickly copy down the correction Welcome back, learners. Now let's answer the last two questions. Convert 1,256 milliliters to liters. What do we do? Liters is equal to milliliters divided by 1,000. So 1,256 milliliters divided by 1,000 will give us 1.256 liters. Then calculate the volume of the prism below. Remember, we need to multiply the length by the width and the height so what is the length three centimeters two centimeters width and three centimeters height so we say three centimeters multiplied by two centimeters multiplied by three centimeters to give us eight cube 18 cubic centimeters now take two minutes to copy down these corrections two minutes Welcome back, learners. I hope you've copied down the corrections. Now let's move on to density. So we've covered mass and we've, we've learned how to do mass conversions. We've also covered volume. 
We learned how to do uh, volume conversions from liters to milliliters, from uh, milliliters to liters. And we also learned how to calculate the volume of an irregular shape, a solid that has an irregular shape. And we also learned how to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism. Now let's move on to density. From the terminology we described, or rather we defined density as the amount of mass in each volume of matter. Now the density of a material describes the amount of mass in each volume of matter in each volume of matter that is how it is described. So I've got two cubes here cube A and cube B. Now the particles in A the particles in A as you can see they have large spaces between them so they are spaced further apart in comparison to the particles inside block B. Now, what does this tell us? So, as a result of this arrangement, as a result of this arrangement of the particles in the blocks, right, block B is denser. They are more packed. As you can see, they are more packed in block B. So, it is denser. We say it is denser than block A as it will have a greater mass within the given volume. So, looking at the two cubes, you can say the volumes are equal the volumes are equal but the measure of the mass of the particles within the spaces within the the, the volume or the space that is taken up here the block b is denser than block a as block b will have a greater mass in comparison to block a now we are talking in terms of arrangement and the spaces between the particles now, if we look at iron and cotton, I'm just going to pull up the illustration. There we've got one kilograms of iron and one kilograms of cotton. Now, if we look at iron and cotton, they have different sizes, but their mass is the same. They are both having a mass of one kilogram, but they are different sizes the spaces that they occupy is different iron is occupying a smaller space in comparison to cotton which is occupying a much larger, larger space right this is because the particles in iron are more closely together and they are more closely packed than the cotton particles so for the cotton particles to equal the amount of mass of the iron particles they have to be more and then they uh, take up more space now all the blocks in this example we've got a block of wood we've got a block of water and we have a block of iron three blocks here all three blocks have the same volume their volume is one cubic centimeter so one cubic centimeters of wood one cubic centimeters of water and one cubic centimeters of iron all the three blocks have the same volume but there is something different about them but the iron block is much heavier how much mass it has a mass of eight grams it has a mass of eight grams the water has a mass of one gram and the wood has a mass of 0 0.5 grams so the iron block is heavier than both the wood and the water blocks why is this so this is also because of the way in which the iron particles are packed into this volume than in the case of wood and in the case of water they may have the same volume but then the way the particles are packed the way the particles are arranged in that space in that space that the iron is occupying in that space that the water is occupying in that space that the uh, the wood is occupying that's where the differences are that is where the differences are now in a substance that has a much higher density the particles are more closely packed together as we saw with the iron in comparison with all the other substances. So the iron had a higher density because its particles are closely packed together. Now the density of a material, we said, let's go back to the definition. We said the density of a material is described as a mass in a certain volume of that material. The mass 
in a certain volume of that material. Now, the density is mass. The density formula is mass per unit volume. And this is how it is written. So density is equal to mass per unit volume. Mass divided by volume. Mass divided by volume. Mass divided by volume. We can also use this formula to calculate mass if we've been given density and volume. We can also use it to calculate volume if we've been given density and mass. Let's see how we're going to do that. So we've already said density is equal to mass per unit of volume. So mass divided by volume. Mass, if you have if you have density and volume, mass is equal to density multiplied by volume, and then volume is equal to mass divided by density you can use this triangle as well you can use this triangle to remember the formula density is mass mass divided by volume mass because these two are side by side we are going to multiply them so mass is equal to density times volume and then volume is equal to mass divided by density so you use that triangle to remember how to calculate density mass and volume when we are working with these figures okay now this is the formula for density so we said density is mass divided by volume so what does it mean in which where 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 does what go so in short we can write it as p is equal to m over v what does the p stand for it stands for density is the symbol for density where the unit is grams per millimeter or grams per cubic centimeter m is the symbol for mass where the unit is grams and then v is the symbol for volume where the unit is milliliters or cubic centimeters so if let's say you are in a situation where you are given the unit as kg you have to convert the kg to the grams so if you're given kgs milliliters and cubic centimeters you need to convert to grams you need to convert to the grams now how do we calculate density how do we calculate density so here is an example what is the density of a cube of sugar with a mass of 11.2 grams measuring two centimeters on each side what is the density of a cube of sugar with a mass of 11.2 grams measuring two centimeters on each side there we go there is our cube we know all the sides of a cube are of the same length they are of the same length so how do we calculate density let's use that formula Density is equal to mass divided by volume. What is our mass? Our mass is 11.2 grams. But we are not given the volume. So we need to calculate the volume. Remember with volume we said it's length multiplied by width multiplied by height. We know a cube. A cube, a cube size, all of them, all of the sides, they are of equal length. So it is Length times width times height. 2 centimeters multiplied by 2 centimeters multiplied by 2 centimeters, which will give us 8 cubic centimeters. So now we have our mass. Now we have our volume. So now we can use our formula to calculate the density of this cube of sugar. Mass divided by volume, 11.2 grams divided by 8 cubic centimeters to give us 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter. So that is the density you can quickly copy down this example i'm going to give you one minute to copy down this example
Welcome back. I hope you copied down the examples. So let's talk more about density. So some materials are heavier than others because of the different materials. Remember the denser the object, the heavier it is. Some materials have a lot of mass in a small space. Remember that iron versus the cotton. The, the iron the, the remember the iron versus the cotton versus the wood versus the water the iron occupied a small space but was heavier than the others but others have a smaller amount of mass in the same space the iron occupied a volume of or had a volume of one cubic centimeter the wood also had a volume of one cubic centimeter but the iron had a mass of 8 grams, whereas the wood had a mass of 0 0.5 grams. They both occupied the same space, but the iron head was denser, it was heavier than the wood. This is because of the particles that they are made of. So the iron block is made up of the particles, the iron particles, and the wood is made up of the particles of wood. So this is because of the particles they are made of. So because of the particles they are made of. Now, some metals will have a lot of mass in a small space in comparison to other materials. Now, some materials have small or light particles. Their particles might be more spread out than in denser materials their particles might be more spread out than in denser materials if we remember the cotton the big ball of cotton and the block of iron they had the same mass they had the same mass but the cotton was more spread out it took up more space it took up more space those two had the same mass but the cotton took up more space the cotton took up more space now which brings us to our second activity i'll read out the questions for you how does mass affect density when the volumes of objects remain the same number two how does the volume affect the density when the masses of objects remain the same and then number three jack has a rock the rock has a mass of 14 grams and a volume of two cubic centimeters what is the density of the rock? And then Frank has an eraser. It has a mass of 4 grams and a density of 2 grams per cubic centimeter. What is its volume? Take 5 minutes to answer these questions. Then after 5 minutes, we will do the solutions together.
Welcome back learners. Now let's answer these questions together. How does mass affect density when the volume of objects remains the same? And how does the volume affect the density when the masses of the objects remain the same? So the, to answer the first question is, the heavier an object, the higher its density will be. And number two, the bigger the volume of an object, the lower its density will be. Take one minute to copy down these corrections. Welcome back, learners. Let's answer question three and question four. Jack has a rock. The rock has a mass of 14 grams and a volume of two cubic centimeters. What is the density of the rock? What is the density? So, what is the mass? The mass is 14 grams. What is the volume? The volume is two cubic centimeters. Now, what is the density of the rock? What is the density of the rock? Now, we say, we use the formula, density is equal to mass divided by volume. Density is equal to mass over volume. So we say mass divided by volume, and then we we'll end up with 7. 7 grams. 7 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, number 4. Frank has an eraser. The eraser has a mass of 4 grams. And the density of it is 2 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the eraser's volume? What is the eraser's volume? So, remember, for volume, we say volume is equal to mass divided by density. If we go back to that triangle, we go back to that triangle, density, mass, and volume. So, we want the volume. So, to get the volume, we'll say the mass divided by density. So, 4 grams divided by 2 grams per cubic centimeter to give us a volume of 2 cubic centimeters. A volume of 2 cubic centimeters. Now, take 2 minutes to copy down this correction.
Welcome back learners. Now let's wrap up our lesson. What did we learn today? We learned that matter occupies space, so it has volume. We also learned that mass is measured in grams and kilograms. Volume is measured in milliliters and liters. Now, some matter occupies more space than other matter with the same mass, so which means the two can have the same mass but different volumes. It is also possible. And this means that that particular matter will be less dense. We also learned the volume, the, the formula for density. We learned the formula for density. We even learned how to use this triangle. So density is equal to mass divided by volume. So this is how you calculate the density. P stands for density, M stands for mass, and V stands for volume. Now, if you are given any of any two of these, if you are given any two of these, be it density, be it mass, be it volume, you can calculate for the third. This is how. Density, if you are given mass and volume to calculate density, you say mass divided by volume. If you are given mass, if you are given if you are, if you are given mass and you are given density to calculate the volume, you say mass divided by density. However, if you are given density and volume to calculate the mass, you say density multiplied by the volume. That's how you do it. Now, here is an homework activity. Now, take one minute to quickly copy down these questions. Welcome back learners. So in our next lesson, we're going to be learning about density and states of matter. We're going to be learning about these two, density and states of matter. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me in today's lesson. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.